On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back with Eric's new work truck. And today, we're gonna make his work truck a lot more workable. You guys already know what's up. We got the old Toto F7. So, I'm gonna do that. Eric's gonna do coils and plugs, and this thing will be a new truck. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jay Argo and today, like I said, we're here with Eric's uh, 542 valve work truck. Yeah, buddy. He said the check engine light just came on, so we're scanning it real quick, seeing what's going on with that. And over here, of course, we have a dash kit that should be for this truck, the radio removal tools, the factory harness. I sure hope that fits. We're about to find out here in a minute. And of course, our Atoto F7WE, so that he's got CarPlay. CarPlay makes everything better. So, as soon as he's done checking these codes here, two fault. It has nothing to scan. EGR, insufficient flow detected. Well, that's probably. Have you tried hitting the EGR system with a hammer? <laughs> I, I, I wish I could tune it out. I, I think old Forescan might tune it out. But uh, I, I would not worry. Oh yeah, forget that one. The P1000's been there every time. Clear the codes. Goodbye. Now you know, EGR fault. Look I at that. Wondered if it was another, uh... I cleared the codes and P1000 already came back. <laughs> Man, he's getting right in there. Are you pulling the battery? Uh, I'm pulling the air filter that probably stops more air than it lets air out. I would assume that air filter's about done over hey. there. All right, in the cabin here, we're gonna delete the radio real quick. So it should be as easy as pushing until it clicks on both of these here. And then pulling backwards in an even motion. Uh-oh. It won't come out. I got the factory radio out. This took a lot of wiggling and a lot of work. I did end up pulling the bezel off of there just to make life easier. And that let me grab the sides of the radio and pull wiggle and use the removal tools at the same time and that's what got this out of there so yeah none of this looks like it's ever been apart there's not a single broken tab but it's about to come apart today uh, according to those connectors we have over there should just be two very simple connectors wow this thing's hot i think it was running a thousand watt amplifier with the amount of heat coming out of this thing let's see connectors around the bottom connector releases that is there's one and I know you can't see probably, but wiggle, 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 yeah. And the antenna won't come out. There it goes. All right. That is one of the dirtiest, cleanest looking Ford radios I've ever seen. Like it's perfect, but also it's Dusty. filthy. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can release the tab here and then put in our new one. So we've got the old radio out, obviously. I'm getting the new one ready. We are just about done prepping the wiring harness here. I've got, what, four more connections to make. And Eric just got the first spark plug out. And we have something many of you have never seen before. I've never seen it in real life. E3 Diamond Fires. It's not a lawnmower. I, these, are, I was like, these are only for Briggs and Stratton lawnmowers. That's How'd you get the lawnmower plug? Well, you know, it, uh... I guess the hits just keep on coming. E3, 3.53. Three. <laughs> it's got a lot of threes in it because diamond mean, fire. It still has some, I mean, it's used up. It's not a great looking plug. But no. Oh, gosh, it's hot. What? <laughs> I just drove it over here. Yeah, you did just drive it over here. <laughs> I forgot about that important message. Here, let me hand you this plug. Thanks a lot. He's going back in with Motorcraft plugs. The right thing for this truck. I, oh, Platinum too. SP479-X. Try to throw a link to that in the description below from our Riley's. And also, uh, he got that old junk air filter out of here that needs to be changed. Yeah, I was making some, making some room. Can you just pull this plate? Yes. It's three, three tens, and ah. then that kind of lets loose over there. Then and it's then, a lot easier to get those. Yeah, I mean, the, the fuel rail still. <laughs> yeah, the fuel rail is in the way, but luckily the coils all bend. Let's make sure I don't. It said, do not cross thread those. Well, yeah, I wouldn't cross thread those. They will come out. I haven't even opened up the box yet. I just got to the harness and said, let's build. So uh, no crazy interfaces or anything, just 12 volts, ignition, ground, and some speaker wires, nothing special about it at all. And here we should have our Toto F7. 
So I've put this in a lot of cars, and I think I've even done a couple for Eric. I've never had You Never? I don't believe you. Anyway, in a few minutes, he will have CarPlay. This is so nice and small, and you know, I, like I said, I put them in everything, and I'm a big fan, so let's rock and roll. I'm gonna tear the plastic off, stick the Wi-Fi antenna right where they say not to on the very top of the head unit, because it works perfectly every time and uh we're ready to plug it in eric's still in there throwing some diamond fires in the trash <laughs> have any luck oh, two for eight <laughs> two for eight i like it and this is mostly soldered up i'm going to clean it up after we do a little initial test so i just have the power wires hooked up and of course i like to test the dimmer wires see which one we need to rock and roll with so let's plug this thing in and see if we get some car play we are plugged in let's see what happens here well power so far, so good. Can't say I'm not quick, we're 10 minutes in here. So to test our illumination, what I like to do, is probably, I'll probably put this up here like so, if I can. We just need to be able to see the screen. So, this has auto lights. And that's what we're gonna hook up right there. You guys can see the screen dim, I think. I can sure see it. So that's auto lights on, and that's all lights off, and the head unit's doing just what we want. And let's see if we dim it. Oh, that's funny. If you use the dimmer on the dash and it turns down far enough, the truck is upset the seatbelts aren't on. I'm gonna try this one just in case, just in case here. Let's see, so it's turned all the way up. Nope, we're gonna use this one. And just like that, we've got this thing totally rocking and rolling. I almost wish we had more work to do, it was too easy. Usually people stick me with backup cameras and all kinds of stuff, 360 cameras. Today, we're doing the simple one. I do need to add the microphone for Bluetooth and then cut the wires out that ding when the seatbelts aren't plugged in. <laughs> because come on. That is outrageous. So uh, we'll run this USB cable down somewhere, even though it's got another port on the front, and uh, hook up the antenna and that's it. These wires get cut. We'll just trim them right there in case we ever need them in the future, but they're, you know, amp turn on and stuff like that that this truck doesn't have. So quick test for you guys. There you go. It works, it sounds good. Well, the microphone install is taking longer than basically the entire head unit install. I've got all of that ready to go. You can hear Eric torquing down spark plugs in there. Um, everything's wrapped up on, I don't love the way it looks, but it works. That's the factory or the aftermarket double ding kit that, that should fit a factory dash. Then I started running the microphone because obviously you want to have hands-free calling and it became a bit of a nightmare. So I pulled the handle off like you would expect. It's got two bolts under it, uh, under some covers, and then the uh, pillar starts unsnapping, but the bottom wouldn't come out because when they put this windshield in, which is factory, there's so much sealant in there that it is locked in place. So what I ended up doing is popping the light control out. There's a little pry tab under there and I don't want to tear the whole dash out of this truck, so I pulled this out, and lo and behold, the microphone cable was right behind it, so I pulled all the cable in, and now I'm going to feed that through the dash and over to the head unit, but this part right here took a long time. Uh, instead of just breaking it, I only pulled the top two tabs and then fed the wire down in the corner. So that's probably the easiest way to do it if you find yourself doing an old F-150 like this. I'm sure the new ones come apart a bit better, and obviously, this would come off any newer car, and it does not on these. It's uh, It sits under this piece and this piece, and on top of that piece. So you have to tear the whole dash down if you wanna get the side off. First things first, we just got back from our rallies where we picked up a new filter for Eric to replace this. This has definitely been in here for a long time. Wow, it was an AM. And this one should be the exact same filter with different letters on the end of it. And here we have a really cool new thing we found at O'Reilly's because Eric is having the worst time getting one of the coils off of here. These are spring loaded swivels. So you don't have to wrap the swivels with electrical tape. So I like the CV style ones too. I'm a big fan of those with the little spring on the outside where it's got a swivel ball. Those work great, but this actually seems like exactly what he needs in quarter inch to finish this job up. And I know Eric's been in here working on this for <laughs> one hour on this one Just cylinder. One. Yeah. I mean, the rest of it's been done for a long time. Yeah. This is 15 minutes. 
right here because yep. you just the whole pull on thing. Right. Front two, okay, eight, not too bad. Uh -huh. Seven, I believe. Impossible. It's, it's under the fuel rail and yeah. you can't, it's pretty hard. Well, Eric's got one left to do. This is gonna solve that problem. And I picked up one more thing from our Rileys here. I didn't have an arbor for my cutoff tool and I have to cut a bunch of plastic out of this dash, unfortunately. So luckily O'Reilly's had our back again with that arbor. So we got all of that solved. Now I've got everything done on this and I was ready to slide it in and we find out the head unit simply does not fit. So to make a double den fit in your 99 to 03, I think, uh, F series truck, you basically take your cutoff wheel up here and just run all the way along this, like a finger high, cut it all out because, let's see, we'll set this in here real quick and you guys can see look how high you have to cut all of that that must be a quarter inch at least at least a quarter inch quite a bit of plastic has to come out and then you can actually slide this thing back in place and throw the dash back in so that's all that's left is cutting the top and snapping this thing in place it's been done for a long time while well, i've been trying to find a way to do this other than using my big grinder so now we have a solution the new master pro Arbor from O'Reilly's. This is the worst dash kit I've ever installed in my life. I highly recommend not doing this unless you have a lot of tools. So in the instructions, it said cutting the bezel will be required on top and bottom. I did not cut the bottom because I wanted to keep it looking as factory as possible. I had to cut a ton out of the top because the bezel won't even sit back on um, with a double den radio in there. So there is a lot, a lot, a lot of cutting involved. Not just the snap-on bezel out here, also the inside. Uh, I ended up taking like that much out of the inside. So I took a line way up and then went like all the way across in there, took out all that black plastic, then put the radio in, then cut the bezel. And now we have wireless car play in this thing. And it should just connect to Eric's phone immediately as soon as we turn this thing on. Definitely not my favorite work, but it's done. And it's as good as it gets for old cars where you have to modify extensively. Look at that. It's in night mode already because the uh, dash lights are on. You can see the headlights auto turned on and the head unit was ready for it. Let's see, his phone might be too far away. Where's your phone at? Got backup camera done yet? Yeah, you don't, you didn't get one. <laughs> Obviously we've got Android Auto, we've got, uh, they, yeah, that's the radio. It looks like podcast, but it's the radio. I did hook up the antenna, so we've got that. Let's see, we've got all kinds of good stuff in here. The front panel USB, micro SD on the front, aux, and there's a built-in microphone above that as well, but we have the microphone installed, as you can see. Seat belts again. Why did it not connect to Eric's phone here? Just kidding, as soon as I hit Bluetooth, it popped right back up. So I know we're good. Wi-Fi works, all that good stuff. CarPlay is on and rocking. So we've got that right there on the dash. Sorry about the beeping. And obviously, super fast, yeah, Domino's. Domino's is one of the few uh, restaurants with a CarPlay app. So there we go. One more Atoto install done. As always, I'll throw a link to that in the description below. You guys love those things. I don't know how many of you have bought them, but the answer is a lot. And so far, everybody seems to be very happy with their Atotos. And I always am as well. Uh, obviously, the really bad install on the F-150 has nothing to do with them. It's much easier if the dash kit works. Uh, what do you need, Eric? Uh, everything's done except for eight. Just needs that stupid seven put in. Okay, the screw that holds the coil? Yes, sir. I'm going in. Plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in. Air filter done. Oh, you're saying seven or eight? The very back one. The very back one? It's sitting there loose, yeah. Okay, and you definitely have the other one in? Yeah. Okay, so this one was very complicated when I did it the other night. So I had to like lift up the screw, turn the coil, or I guess that was the other middle of the day, wasn't it? I'm almost uh, there. That was like a week ago. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, it was definitely a pain, I remember. I remember it being a pain. Also, sorry about this light, guys. I know it strobes. Well, now that we're done with this nonsense, we can get back to the thing we originally planned on doing today, which is trimming out all my windows. So, you ready to start on part two? <laughs> I, brought, uh, I brought the trim, Eric brought the chop saw. That was the whole reason his truck's over here, and it turned into a toto and coils and plugs instead of uh, <laughs> trimming out windows. But 
We also think we could trim out these windows in just a handful of minutes because I've got my Brad nailer over here, knock off Milwaukee. That's what we're calling this now. I think Eric said it's called casual Milwaukee because same, same parent company. Don't act like it's the same tool. There's only like four parent companies left in the world. But the main mission's accomplished. This thing's been upgraded and he can definitely drop a stock head unit back in and no one will be able to tell in the future. That was my main thing. I didn't want to modify it too much so I didn't cut the bottom like they said. Uh, if you ever went back to a stock head unit, which I'm sure nobody ever will, it could be done without uh, it looking strange. And no wires cut, obviously, anything like that. So down to the last couple seconds here and we can call this truck wrapped up. If you're doing spark plugs on an F-150, be prepared for a bit of a job when you get to seven and eight on the driver's side. It will take you some time there. I mean, you could just use a wrench and spend a lot of time or get those spring-loaded swivels from O'Reilly's and it'll make your life much easier. So, new Atoto F7. Like I said, links in the description below for all the fun stuff, coils, plugs. We're finally on Motorcraft plugs instead of uh, Diamond Fire. <laughs> <laughs> it runs so much better and if you guys before you I mean it didn't sound like there was any intake noise but now it sounds like it's just gulping down air when the throttle opens on this thing so well I noticed that I was getting around 300 miles to a tank which it probably isn't bad because it's only like what 24 gallons so for an old truck not terrible yeah and then I noticed lately I've been like 250 to 260 but it kind of makes sense if it's not running right like it's supposed to and that air air thing is pretty clogged up that filter was trash there were holes in it <laughs> so. Yeah, so pretty pretty bad but I, I don't know what else you can do for a, a tune you know, it's got 257,000 miles on it I think you're good I think but, you're good you, do you remember how it, I wonder if those diamond fire? So when you Tritons have the signature, choo choo choo, boom, yeah. when they start, but yeah. this seemed a little excessive. Remember, like on start, it just, but when you started it, it seemed to not. It started, it sounded nasty. It ripped right to running on this last pull here. So it's really good now on the, on the original plugs. My confusion is, as an experiment, one time we put diamond fires in a, I think it was an avalanche and it didn't run on a Chevy, it did not run at all. <laughs> and then on this, somehow, who, those have been in there a long time. Yeah, they, they definitely have been in there for a How long time. How was it running? <laughs> no idea. All we know is the tune-up's done, the audio is sorted out, yeah, a lot of modifications happened today, but this thing should be ready to rock and roll with all the creature comforts now. Good work truck. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. shopwatchjerrigo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. All right, start this thing so everybody can hear what we're talking about. It's, it sounds so much better. It's kind of unbelievable. This sound from the outside it sound like a cleaner stuff. Yeah, and then give me a rev so we can hear it go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can clean the floorboards? Oh, I cleaned everything, man. Oh, send someone else the bill. I figured since I uh, vacuumed it, I, since I cut all that plastic in there, I had to vacuum it. <laughs> Let's start the way. Yeah, it's going to cut down. It's definitely better. All right. Give oh, wow. She runs great. I've always thought it had a a rough initial start but that's uh oh that's amazing the clock's set too but it's in 24 hour time but yeah uh check eric's iphone to complete the connection so if you just unlock your phone it should pop up and you'll have car clip. a couple times it it wants it unlocked there it's because it's an iphone 14. yeah you gotta, you gotta <laughs> i can't afford i can't afford 15. you gotta have 15. they sell those at o'reilly they do oh, okay. one very sorted work truck and we cleaned a bunch of the shop up